Thank you. Good morning. Uh, and it's my privilege to give a status report of HPC in India. In India, uh, we have several organizations which are related to HPC activities, which include uh, research organizations and user agencies like Meteorological Department, like uh, National Center for Medium Range Weather Forecast, Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology, Meteorology, INCOIS, uh, CSIR Lab, and so on and so forth. And there are uh, these organizations which uh, carry out research in HPC infrastructure and applications like CDAC, uh, CMM, ACS. Uh, In-house development of uh, several uh, organizations which are DRDO, uh, Defense, um, Atomic Research, National Aeronautics Lab, Space Program, uh, and then there are educational institutes uh, which all are major users of HPC and large HPCs are installed there in IITs and Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. Like uh, top 500 list, we do maintain a very small top five top supercomputers of India list, which is a complementing list to top 500. Uh, this June, in synchronization with top 500 list, this is the top eight. Uh, computers which actually um, so it, there are total of 14 computers which are in top 500 list this time uh, the topmost computer today is a computer installed at supercomputer education and research center in Indian Institute of Science Bangalore this is about a petaflop 1.2 petaflop uh, uh, peak computing uh, on HPL benchmark comes to about 900 uh, teraflop of computing in addition to this, uh, uh, there are a uh, few more computers which are not listed here and are going to probably make through in the next uh, at least two more computers which are actually reaching to PETA scale computing. This is the machine uh, which is the topmost machine in the country is called Shashrat. In literal meaning is thousand arms. Um, this is a HPC machine at Indian Institute of Science Bangalore which is a great XC440 system with about 1500 uh, CPUs, uh, mostly Intel Xeon Haswell. And this is the machine that comes to PETA scale. This is the first time a PETA scale machine has been uh, you know, uh, made in India or rather assembled in India. Uh, I thought it's also a um, point where I should talk about a little bit on CDAC. CDAC and HPC, they go synonymously. Uh, CDAC was established for the development of HPC in the country. It's a national body, uh, government body for HPC. And it has been in existence for more than 25 years. Drives the HPC initiatives all across the country and is known for its leadership in HPC. Um, CDAC established or developed a Param series of supercomputers right from um, 1991, the first uh, Param series of supercomputer, Param 8000, which was based on transputer, to today, which is Param Yuba 2, which is half a pita flop machine. <coughs> and there are various other machines which are available, primarily uh, these sites in Pune, Bangalore, and another one in Pune for bioinformatics research. There are several indigenous components which have been completely built. Uh, by CDAC, this includes uh, switches, this include uh, you know network card, Paramnet 3, this include the software for communication substrate and uh, software stack for HPC applications and then various other system and software development and of course industrial design ourselves. I thought I will also take this uh, opportunity to talk about another exciting project called Param Shavak which is actually a small supercomputer primarily intended for academic research and academic uh, training purposes. It's a, uh, it's a supercomputer in a box solution, doesn't require a, a massive infrastructure, either in terms of air conditioning or civil. Uh, it's an easy to deploy solution, but doesn't require any of data center infrastructure. Uh, gives about something close to three, three teraflop of supercomputing and it actually can be configured with a Xeon board or Xeon uh, 5 base accelerators or uh, GPU base accelerators. 
Uh, there are several HPC applications which we are actually working on in CDAC. It includes atmospheric, computational atmospheric science, climate model, um, medium range weather model and these kind of things, seismic data processing, computational biology which is again another major area, uh, computational fluid dynamics and structural mechanism. I thought I should talk about what is coming in future. Recently, Government of India took a major initiative of what is known as National Supercomputing Mission. And the main objective of this mission is to develop or to regrow capacity and capability. It's a seven year long project with an outlay of about uh, 700 million US dollar. Uh, the two implementing agencies are CDAC and Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore. Uh, the objectives of this particular uh, mission is to actually enhance the national capability in solving grand challenge problems which are of national and global relevance, empower scientists and researchers with state of art facilities and reduce redundancies and avoid duplication in efforts and investments. In this mission, um, there are various components. We would be establishing something close to about 70 odd supercomputers. These are going to be very small entry level supercomputers to a very large supercomputer. Um, about 50 plus computers are going to be close to about 50 to 100 teraflop kind of a machine and 20 machines are going to be close to about 500 teraflop and there are going to be three large supercomputers which will be petaflop, peta, uh, maybe tens of peta, 10 of peta scale supercomputers. Uh, all these supercomputers will be built by connecting um, them into a grid. We have a, another major networking project called National Knowledge Network, which can be, which is actually connecting all educational institutes and research organizations, and these computers will therefore be connected on that. Um, in addition to this, we are also investing in a major way in cloud infrastructure, creating a cloud of at least a million core cloud distributed all over and also developing a major focus on applications, supercomputing applications through collaborations, manpower development and be ready for next generation of supercomputing, exascale supercomputing. Basically, the problem is the following. If you actually look at any supercomputing infrastructure, building, operating and maintaining of supercomputing is very, very expensive. Power consumption of these computers are also very difficult and therefore a strategy that we actually established was we actually create the supercomputer distributed all over the country and connect them through a very fast communication link using NKN. This will allow user application to seamlessly migrate from one to another and also use facilities all across and therefore a standardization of these supercomputers were necessary. So the HPC, yeah. HPC infrastructure is basically a three tier infrastructure. As I said, 50 small computers, 20 medium and three large, connecting it on national uh, knowledge network and connecting on the other end to HPC users. Some of these potential areas uh, which we have identified. So I think I'll just summarize this now. Uh, three tier approach for capacity building, applications through partnership. So we will actually sit with all the application owners, develop the applications which are of national relevance and there are several applications that we have identified. Capability building in terms of R&D in HPC for next generation. Uh, training the manpower for developing HPC applications as well as operations and management. Now these are very major things because we have been talking about training of about 20,000 people over 7 years. Now this is a huge challenge because 20,000 number is actually a very big number. Um, over 7 years it comes to about 3,000 people being trained for HPC applications. Uh, I think uh, with this I come to end of my presentation. Thank you. <laughs>